How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to your favorite weekly horoscope, this time for September 27th through October 3rd of 2021. My name is Cam White. Thank you guys so much for being here. Liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you. We have quite an eventful week ahead of us. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Um, let me pull up the thing, the, the shit sheet. Um, I thought that was really funny. Um, it looks a little bit different because the way I used to do it, Apple's iOS system doesn't let me do it anymore. So anyway... It looks like this now. But um, we're starting this week off uh, on Monday with Mercury stationing retrograde. Now, I said this last week, but Mercury stationed retrograde really late Sunday night, right? So for a lot of us, we're going to be waking up to a Mercury now retrograde. As well on Monday, we're going to be having the moon make a square to Neptune, which isn't really going to be fun. But the moon is going to be applying to a trine with Jupiter and Mercury, which does kind of sound a little harmonious. But anyway, let's go ahead and just look at the chart because this Monday, well, this week is just kind of chaotic all in general. Uh, first things first, Mercury is now retrograde. What have you been, again, where does Libra rule your chart? Or what, yeah, what house does Libra rule in your chart? Um Going back to things that I talked about in my Mercury retrograde video, where does Libra rule in your chart? What has been, what is, where, what has your mind been focused on? Where have you been, you know, thinking about things, rationalizing things? Where has communication really been focused? And as Mercury's been in shadow, a lot of context has been setting itself up. As Mercury stations retrograde, we're going to come back over all of this stuff again. Now, the the thing is though, with Mercury retrogrades, and I can't emphasize this enough. Oftentimes, Mercury retrogrades just really signify delays, um, miscommunications, just things getting put on hold for a moment. A lot of us can really kind of interpret this to be much deeper than it really is, which, you know, for some people, this will be a really crazy Mercury retrograde. For some people, this will be, um, you know, really active, you know, Mercury retrograde in Libra. This will be, you know, big for their relationships or, or, or whatever, but... It's not always really that big of a deal. I think the biggest thing that to really look at, though, is all of the stuff that you were kind of thinking about, that you were uh, planning on, that you were communicating. You might have thought you had all of the um, the evidence, or maybe you thought you saw everything clearly. As Mercury stations retrograde, you know, you're wrong. You didn't see everything clearly. You didn't account for everything. Um, not everything is as clear as maybe you thought it was. Um, maybe, you know... Mercury retrograding in Libra is like you don't know you don't know until you know, right? Um, Mercury retrograding in Libra too is like maybe you, have you ever like met someone or maybe just were trying to communicate something to someone that was sensitive and you, you didn't know how they were gonna react, but then they like said something and you're like, oh, I thought you know like maybe you thought that they thought differently about the thing that you were like afraid to bring up with them. Um, have you ever, am I the only one that's ever experienced that? I feel like that's a lot of this Mercury retrograde in Libra is like, you know, trying to be polite, trying to be nice about certain things, but then realizing like, oh, like, you know, I was, we see eye to eye on it. Like we could talk about things, right? I think Mercury retrograding in Libra is realizing, you know, where you're communicating relationships, uh, what, what's right, what's just, that, that idea is starting to change. Um, that's why I was like, you know, over these past few weeks with my weekly horoscopes, I've really been talking about like, hey, like, you know, it's kind of like being in a courtroom. You can't really react. Like the Mercury retro, it's because Mercury's going to retrograde. The things that are being stated as, you know, fact or the things that are being stated as, you know, truth and that everything's moving forward. It's like, no, we're going to come back to this. So, you know, just hold your horses, right? As Mercury stations retrograde, you know, we knew that we were going to come back to this stuff. We knew like, what Mercury's going to do is show us that we don't always know everything um show us that sometimes we are wrong and you know show us what we got to go back on what we have to uh retract what we have to renegotiate what we have to rethink what we have to reorganize right the moon's also going to be making a square to neptune all day on monday um throughout the majority of the day really so what's difficult about this is again is like the moon's in Gemini and we're talking, but the moon is squaring Neptune, so no one really knows what we're saying. You know, a lot of talking's going on, not a lot of listening. And I think this is where you know when conversations kind of happen under false pretenses. You know, moon and Gemini squaring Neptune and Pisces is like a game of telephone, right? And then as Mercury's retrograding, there's kind of like this realization of like, oh, not everything's actually as clear as maybe we thought it was. 
there is some confusion with this. There is some uncertainty with this, right? Like as Mercury is retrograde and we're starting to see things differently, the moon in Gemini making that square to Neptune is asking like, well, what else are we not seeing clearly? What else are we confusing uh, or what else are we confused with? What I do like though is that the moon is trining Mercury and Jupiter all day long on Monday. So yeah, we're a little bit confused on what's going on, but we have no problem communicating what we're confused on or what we need to backtrack on. As the moon's, you know, trining Mercury, moon's in Gemini, Mercury in Libra, right? Like the communication, the, uh, uh, what's the word? Like the cord or like the connection is already there. The connection's been made. Um, and as the moon's trining Jupiter, right? Like there's this ability to integrate. There's this leniency. There's this leaning towards like agreeableness. I think a lot of things will just kind of put themselves in motion on Monday. Um, it might be a little bit confusing because, again, Mercury's retrograde. Maybe someone, again, what Mercury retrogrades are are a miscommunication. Someone could literally miscommunicate something with you. And then Moon and Gemini squaring Neptune, you're like, mm, is that what they said? And then you kind of, you know, reassure them. You're like, did you just say this? And then they're like, no, I didn't say that. And everything gets, you know, worked out. That's kind of like what Monday really looks like. Monday has really a lot going on. And it's simply because it's like the, the domino effect, right? Mercury retrograding while the moon's scoring Neptune and also trining Mercury and Jupiter. It's kind of like, you know, it's like a game of telephone, except instead of like, you know, I used to, we used to play that game in like our classroom as like a kid. And rather than like a classroom, it's a game of telephone, but with like, you know, a company. So like a bunch of things actually happen and a bunch of things go in motion, but no one actually knew what was going on. Anyway, so we kind of start Monday off with realizing what the issue is. We start realizing what needs to be done over again. We're starting to realize what wasn't necessarily true or what was necessarily right and we're going to go back on everything so anyway we go we that's how we start monday off uh we go into tuesday and as we go into tuesday here i should bring, bring this up not a lot's really going on on tuesday um the moon is simply just going to be ingressing into cancer and really applying to mars throughout the later evening going into actually wednesday but mostly uh on Tuesday night is when the moon's going to be applying to Mars through that square. Um, pretty much as the moon goes into Cancer, we just turn into sensitive. Where it's it's heightened sensitivity. Um, the moon's focused again, where we need to nurture ourselves, where we need to take care of ourselves. The moon in Cancer is where it's like you know checking in with your body. How do you feel about things? And I think as the moon's in this superior position, squaring Mars and Libra is like, um, you know. Just because you feel like uncomfortable, like that moon and cancer squaring Mars and Libra is like, oh, I don't want to say that to them. That could hurt their feelings. It's like, you know, well, in life, you kind of have to hurt some feelings. You know what I mean? And this moon and cancer squaring Mars and Libra is really, you know, Mars does like moon and cancer squaring Mars and Libra. Like Mars and Libra doesn't want to spill things over. Mars and Libra doesn't want to tilt things too far on either side. But I think the moon and cancer squaring Mars and Libra is kind of like, hey, I'm feeling very sensitive. Uh, I feel a certain way about something. I mean, Venus is still in Scorpio. Like, uh, there's a lot of heightened sensitivity, specifically this week, because this is just day one of the moon in Cancer. We got like two or three more days to go. So, um, as the moon's scoring Mars, there's just something uneasy about Tuesday. Like, not feeling, you know, exactly right. Mercury's now retrograde. Mars is in Libra. There's kind of this, like, you know, it, it's kind of like going back to that courtroom analogy that I've been really using these past few weeks. You know, you're on trial and I'm, sh and I'm sure when you're in the middle of a trial, right, like there's something that's it that gets uneasy in you that's like, fuck, like, how is this going to go? Is this going to be good? Is this going to be bad? What's going to happen? I feel like that's a lot of what Tuesday is. Um, and really simply put, like when I, you know, when we pull up the thing, Tuesday is literally just the moon going into Cancer making that square to Mars. So there's this sense of like feeling really sensitive, feeling much more like heightened sensitivity, but it's squaring Mars. So there's this irrationalness. There's this irritability. There's this frustration. Mars is in Libra. So it's very passive aggressive. So it's going to be really important to like tune in with yourself and not like don't just don't be a crybaby like or if you are going to be one like don't be an asshole to other people while you're gonna do it don't be passive aggressive with people like you know what i mean with all this libra stuff it's gonna be really easy to do that you just want to be blunt you want to be upfront, especially with things on how you feel and the, but the biggest thing is if you're not if you're not certain or if you're not sure about how you feel about something like don't don't say shit you know what i mean like unless you know what's up like you know 
Don't be like, hey, there's a problem with this. And then people are like, what's the problem? And you're like, well, I don't know. Like, okay, shut up then. Anyway, <laughs> we get into – that's pretty much Tuesday. Tuesday is just, in my opinion, it, it just feels a little uncomfortable. But again, the moon's in cancer. It's much more of a focus on, you know, nurturing yourself, heightened sensitivity, making sure you feel comfortable. But I just feel like that – You'll, you will feel like you need to feel more comfortable because you will feel be feeling uncomfortable with the moon squaring Mars. Anyway, we go to Wednesday. Uh, as we get into Wednesday, the moon's going to make that sextile to Uranus. I mean, what is that really? Uh, but Venus is going to try Neptune on Wednesday. Now, I kind of alluded to this earlier uh, on last week's horoscope that I kind of, you know, I was like, it's a little toxic, but it's fun. Um, here's, here's the deal. The moon's going to be in the middle of Cancer. Uh, it doesn't actually apply to Venus on Wednesday. It'll apply to Venus on Thursday, which we'll talk about. But the moon is separated from the sun and Mars all day, right? Hasn't yet got to Venus, hasn't yet got to Mercury, hasn't yet got to Pluto. Really, the only thing is like the moon, again, sex telling Uranus, but like, okay, you find an inventive way to get comfortable. <laughs> you, you find a new position to lay in on the couch. You find a new way to eat, you know, carbs. Like, you know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, like... I don't know. Really not the most important transit. Um, what is, though, is this, again, it's Venus trying Neptune. Why I said it's fun and kind of toxic, but, you know, fun, is Venus is in Scorpio, right? Like, I saw some people talk, like, someone uh, I, someone made a comment on, I think, one of my last weeklies that um, I, I, I actually really, really related to, but they were like, I haven't been horny, like, since Venus has been in Scorpio, I don't want to have sex, or, like, and yes, and again, like, and I've talked about celibacy. You guys, you know, I've seen that, and you know that that's Venus and Scorpio, right? Like enjoying the Mars stuff. Like Mars is like going without, right? Mars is dealing with less. Mars is dealing with the, you know, irrational. Like the Mars is the intense stuff. The uh, Venus and Scorpio too is like they only, Venus and Scorpio is like only going to enjoy it if it's intense, if it's deep, if it's meaningful. Like go like. Rather than Venus and Scorpio finds pleasure by going without pleasure, by denying pleasure, by, you know, um, that type of standard, right? But what's cool about Venus and Scorpio too is like Venus enjoys the Mars stuff. Right? Like it's it's rough. It's intense. It's, um, you know, very real if that makes sense. And as that trends Neptune, the reason I like this is like, you know, Venus and Scorpio – you might be you might enjoy this stuff. It's not maybe not everything is always the best to enjoy with Venus and Scorpio. But with Neptune and Pisces where we can romanticize a lot of situations and really idealize a lot of situations, you know, this is one of those things where it's like, you know, well for example, if Venus in Scorpio was squaring Neptune in Leo. I know that's like a weird way to look at it, but like think of it this way. Neptune is how we idealize and romanticize things, right? So if Venus is squaring Neptune like when Venus goes into Sagittarius, which we'll talk about, um, but if Venus is squaring Neptune, this is like, for example, this is kind of like, here's a funny example. This is like finding out about a new sex position or a new sex thing online. And then like Venus squaring Neptune is like realizing that, yeah, again, it's like porn's not really real. A lot of that stuff's not real. You're not going to like actually, it's not as hyped up as it was versus Venus trying Neptune is like, there's a certain thing that you might be romanticizing or idealizing, but like you'll get that experience out of it. Like Venus trying Neptune is like something is like much more idyllic. Something is much more romantic and much more rosy and fun. And it's Venus and Scorpio, right? Like it's like, it's a little toxic. It's a little fun, but it's a little fun. It's like, it's like, you know, in, it's an enjoyable depth in my opinion. It's kind of like, for example, um, <laughs> oh i can think of so many funny things with this but it's like you know how like certain textures will like freak people out but some people are like sick and so they're like into that type of shit that's like this like uh like what's a good example like some people might get really freaked out well for example when uh a couple weeks ago i talked about like watching um like a butcher video as like asmr and some people you know i forget that some of my followers are vegans and stuff like that and so that to them is like horrible like they would hate that versus me i'm like oh this is cool like i'm like into it right venus and scorpio trining neptune like in pisces like something intense you're gonna get into it it's something to enjoy and i think well and i'm bringing this up too is because while mercury's retrograding in libra all these things are in libra we're really questioning what do we want what do we like you know what are we relating on what do we enjoy what is right and i think as venus is in scorpio there's this sense of like questioning what we want because clearly what we're if venus was in libra 
if this was if this Mercury retrograde and Mars in Libra was like you know was all happening in Libra with Venus in Libra, we would be like renegotiating like the terms of like maybe what we want. And we would be very clear about the things that we want versus I think with Venus and Scorpio, it went opposite Uranus. This, there's the sense of like what we thought we wanted, maybe what we thought we enjoyed or maybe what we were enjoying just isn't like that anymore. Things change. And as Venus is in Scorpio, we're starting to go, you know, do, you know, things that are unorthodox for pleasure, right? Like Venus and Scorpio is very like, again, for example, Venus and Scorpio is like the, the black, the dark, the goth aesthetic. That on a general beauty terms isn't looked at as beautiful, but that's the whole point of Venus and Scorpio, right? Like it's like making the non-enjoyable enjoyable. And so I just look at this as, as it's, it's shining Neptune is like, I think simply, simply because things are like taboo, sometimes people get into things because they're simply more taboo than other things, right? Um, and there's a romanticized, there's an idealized version of that. And I just think on Wednesday, I think we're really seeing that. I think we're kind of going, oh yeah, like I, what I thought I used to like, I don't necessarily or, you know, however this is really looking for you. But I think this is kind of, again, enjoying something uh, a, a lot more. Um, for example, um, my sister talked about this when she was uh, sobering up, how like a lot of sober people talk about like the pink cloud, I think it's called, where it's like life is like amazing for like 90 or like 60 days or something like that. Like it's like sobriety is amazing, but then it kind of comes off. This is kind of like that. It's like, oh, this is an amazing thing because I'm into it right now and because it's opposite of what I'm used to, right? It's kind of like, you know, if you've been married forever, being single is going to feel liberating or freeing or whatever, or, you know, vice versa. It's 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 that kind of um, aspect. So Wednesday, what well, what's just weird is like, this is really the only thing. So I think this is kind of like, again, in, enjoy it. Like enjoy, enjoy Wednesday, Mercury's retrograde in Libra. Like, we're really starting to understand like Mercury retrograding, right? Like our ideas are changing, our rational thoughts are changing in Libra with the things that we want, the things that we enjoy. And Venus is in Scorpio, trying Neptune, like you're like, oh, I actually do kind of like this. Oh, I actually do think this is cool. Like, oh, I actually kind of like that. Like that's, that's this. Anyway, uh, we get into Thursday. Thursday is kind of crazy. Now, What's funny about Thursday, besides Venus making a square to Jupiter and the Sun, tr Saturn trying, if you want to consider that a, like a, an important aspect, it's not like a crazy, it's not like a bunch of like super crazy things going on. It's just a bunch of stuff. Like it's just a lot of like just planetary movement in general. So let me get to Thursday real quick. Ugh. I got a haircut for like the first time in like months and like my hair dangles down. I could feel it now. So it like bugs me. But anyway. We get to Thursday, end of the month. Here's the thing. Uh, the moon is going to be making the square to Mercury the whole day as it's opposite Pluto. I don't like this. Like you have to be able to know how to handle pressure, right? Um, and I think as the moon's in Cancer, squaring Mercury in Libra, opposite Pluto in Capricorn, is it's, it's game theory, right? Like, you know, the, I don't know if you guys know game theory, but the, the, the idea is if you and someone else – do a crime, for example, and the cops catch you and they separate you and they say, well, if you don't snitch on your friend, we're going to make sure you get more time than like he does. So it incentivizes them to snitch. But how it also works is like if they don't say anything, none of them can get caught and they can go away because you're not supposed to talk to the police. Uh, anyway, moon squaring Mercury going opposite Pluto is like, don't feel pressured to express something simply because you are scared. Mercury is squaring Pluto. Again, like Mercury, like, well, I mean, you're seeing this like the, with the whole China stuff, uh, with the Evergrande thing. I thought that was interesting because that really started when Mercury was really starting to apply to Pluto last week. Um, and I think you're going to see more of that as Mercury's retrograding. But Mercury is squaring Pluto, right? It's like, uh-oh, like, you know, what you say can and will be used against you. You have to really make sure you're saying the right things. But as the moon and cancer is squaring it, it's like, um, for example, um, well, here's, <laughs> uh, what's his face? Bill Gates. I just watched this the other day. Bill Gates was like questioned about his relationship to Jeffrey Epstein. He was just like, bah, 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 bah. like just, you know, uncomfortable you could tell you could just tell he was uncomfortable with the situation and his emotions and his feelings spoke louder than his words that is this moon in cancer opposite pluto 
Square Mercury, like, I've got to say the right thing. And he pretty much just like, you know, went on, he, like, he didn't even say why he was hanging out with him. He was just like, I'm just proud of the work that our charity has done. You know, just trying to say the right words, not saying it right. And how he was saying it, his emotions behind it, his body language, that, um, what's the word? Not, not just body language, nonverbal communication. That's very moon, right? Uh, that was louder than what he said. And so I look at something like Thursday and it's like, Yo, you know, you got to be, you can't crack under fear. Like Mercury squaring Pluto, moon's opposite Pluto. Like that's fear-based stuff. And like, don't react. Just just keep it cool. Our sensitivity is going to be heightened. Like going back to that courtroom analogy. Let's say you're getting questioned or whatever. The, the prosecution's going to ask you questions for you to crack, for you to fuck up. Like that's the that's their job is to catch you. They want you to fuck up and do that type of stuff. And they know how to do that. They have tactics for that type of stuff. And so I know I'm sure like if someone's like in a lawsuit right now, I'm like totally speaking to them. But like just for the average person, this is one of those things or not the average, just not the average person. If you're not going through like a lawsuit, I think one of this type of thing is like don't freak out and don't just start babbling stuff away. Like don't – let your emotions get the best of you. Remember, like Mercury's that you're getting in Libra, everything you can say will be will be used against you. Like, just remain calm, remain cool. Because also on Monday, I mean, my Monday, Thursday, not only is the moon squaring Mercury and the moon is opposite Pluto, the moon is trining Venus and the moon is trining Neptune, right? Venus is in Scorpio, trining Neptune. This can really like exacerbate fears too um can really bring a lot of things and again like all there's a lot of heightened sensitivity here that i'm that i'm really just picking up on and i think as the moon's trining venus and scorpio like just because you feel a certain way just because you feel the heat of the moment doesn't mean you should like act on those things right um you know the feeling of doing something isn't always lined up with the Something might feel really good to do an idea, but it actually isn't going to be good to do as you do it, like if you actually go for it, if you actually do it, right? Um, so just Thursday, the moon transit in and of itself is really particular. Like the moon's going to be trining Venus and Neptune. So I think, again, there's an opportunity for us to make up stories about situations. For us, I mean, Venus is a Scorpio. We're going to feel hurt. We're going to, it's going to feel dramatic. Moon's going to be squaring Mercury. We're going to like... Just try to calm down on Thursday. You know, if you feel too much pressure, take a recess. Take a break if you can. Um, chill for a minute. The moon is then going to go into Leo afterwards, right? So it'll be easier to kind of talk with cur uh, courage. It'll be easier to communicate through pride and through ego as the moon goes into Leo. And sometimes those are good things. Sometimes those are bad things. I just think as the moon's in Cancer, it's just going to be easier for your, especially with Mercury retrograde and Libra, for your nonverbal communication, for your body language to speak louder than your actual words. And because Mercury's retrograding in Libra squaring Pluto, that can be used against you in a lot of ways. So just, you know, be careful with how you're expressing yourself. How Be careful of what you're feeling, right? Like, don't just be like... It, don't just be responsible with your actions, like be responsible with your thoughts and your feelings. Like you are in control of that stuff. And this is one of those times to test that. Uh, then we get to, you know, Venus also making a square to Jupiter also on Thursday. That's also kind of a lot. I don't really, I don't know how I feel about this transit, to be honest with you, because it's like, you know, Venus is in detriment and Jupiter, you know, it's not like Jupiter has a ton of dignity in Aquarius. Um, Jupiter's still in Saturn's ruled sign and, you know, J Saturn's still there, but Venus and Scorpio, right? Like what we're doing and kind of being edgy, Venus and Scorpio is very edgy, um, doing things in a very counterculture way, making the square to Jupiter in Scorpio is kind of like, it, well, it's kind of like a, uh, what's that thing on Mean Girls where she's like, that's so fetch. And then they're like, that's not a thing. That's very Venus and Scorpio square and Jupiter and Aquarius. It's like, you might think something's cool, but it's not Not everyone's going to jive with it at the same time. Like it's going to, there's disharmony in integrating things, right? Like Venus is in Scorpio where it's like, I don't, I don't even know a good analogy for that. It's just like, there's something that people want that they're like, you know, really attached to squaring Jupiter and Aquarius. It's just, well, the other thing too is when we just talk about the planets that rule pleasure, Venus and Jupiter, the fun things, and they're at 
they're in a harsh aspect with each other. One of them's in detriment, the other one's in Saturn. This is kind of like, have you ever like, you knew something wasn't going to be good, but you tried to enjoy it anyway, and it just wasn't enjoyable. That's the Venus square Jupiter. Because that's, well, and that's another reason why I'm like, this moon square Mercury, like, Venus is squaring Jupiter. There's this uncomfortability anyway. There's this not feeling satisfied with things anyway. And I think that doesn't help the moon making the square to Mercury because it's like you're not going to like, you know, it's kind of like getting your food and you don't like it, but you can't actually describe what it is that you don't like about it. So no one can really help you if you can't tell people what the problem is. Um, and then also, too, the sun is trining Saturn, which is like I think the weirdest aspect about this day. Well, I mean, technically the sun trines Saturn really like on Wednesday. But Thursday too, which like the sun's in fall in Libra where the sun's like, all right, whatever, I guess I'll do it this way. Like the sun's in Libra, it's easier for your ego to be much more connected and like getting rewarded for working with people and leaning on people and like doing, you, you know, doing what people want, right? And as that trying Saturn in Aquarius, there's this kind of like, you know, it will make things go easier. This is going, you know, with authority. This is going with like the rules and the system, which is fine. Um, the sun's trining Saturn. Saturn's getting radio station direct. Like your ego, you got to be willing to, again, you got to be willing to work with things and find a fair balance. Like this is not like sun trying Saturn's not a day to be like, fuck authority. I oppose authority. Sun and Libra is like, mm, maybe, you know, for example, when you're uh, on trial, oftentimes people take a plea bargain. That's very Sun and Libra trining Sun and uh, Saturn and Aquarius. The biggest thing here, though, is that, like, you know, I just think this moon transit's really killer on Thursday. Like, just not really anyone's cup of tea, which that brings us to Friday. Uh, on Friday, as we start October off, we have the moon going opposite Saturn, the moon making that sextile to Mars as Mercury actually perfects that uh, square to Pluto um let's pull this up we go into october yeah the moon's going opposite saturn where this is really kind of like um you know as i was writing this out like the 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 the, the thing that came to my head was like it's it's like a respect issue like the moon and leo is like my feelings are are valid they're real my and like pride is a real feeling like you know like it's it, Men deal with like a lot of pride issues, right? And a lot of ego issues. But like a man needs like his pride in a, in, a, in a lot of ways. Like we're all very emotional people. We're all just children on the inside, really. Um, and we're all very sensitive people. And that moon and Leo opposite Saturn and Aquarius is like, hey, look, like I, my feelings need to feel respected. My feelings need to be at least felt seen and validated, right? Opposite Saturn and Aquarius, there's the sense of like, you know, being honest and real with things because when Saturn's in front of you, you know, when there's like an authority in front of you, there's no point to like hiding things or to like deceive or anything like that. Moon and Leo's like, hey, this is how I feel. This is how I am. Accept it for how it is or fuck off kind of energy, right? So I think as the moon's in Leo opposite Saturn and Aquarius, this is kind of like approaching things through a very like, hey, this is what I got to get off my chest. This is just how I feel about the situation. The moon is sextiling Mars in Libra where there's like, hey, I'm not trying to fight. But like, you know, there has to be the sense of like, Moon and Leo, you're going to feel a certain way about yourself, about your ego, about your pride. And, you know, there are times to stand up for, there are times to put it away. And this isn't necessarily a time to put it away or to like enrage everything with it, but you still have to make how you feel. And, you know, you have to, you have to let that people know how you feel, right? Like your, your emotions are still important and how you get that, you can do that in a very respectfully, um, you can do that in a respectful way that, you know, incentivizes people to work with you. Uh, Mercury's also, again, squaring Pluto on Friday. So there's, again, this kind of like uh, the balance of power is really uh, running thin or it's it's on it's very loose terms. Mercury and Libra squaring Pluto is kind of like, it, you know, a really shitty analogy is it's kind of like, the idea of the Cold War, which is, I mean, a whole nother thing when you want to talk about the astrology, but like that idea that literally, well, like for example, that one guy who like didn't push the nuke button because he thought it was a miscommunication that he thought, you know, that their submarine got like orders to like nuke the US and he didn't push the button. Like Mercury retrograde in Libra squaring Pluto is like little tiny decisions, little tiny miscommunications can truly for example one of my favorite i'm so glad i can go on this rant about this oh my god 
out of the biggest, I, there's so many things to truly complain about with COVID, with lockdowns, with everything. And then my biggest complaint is the word normalcy. It's not a fucking word. It's not a fucking word. It's not a word. It was made up by a dumbass back in, uh, oh my God, who was, it was a politician, literally made up the word out of nowhere. Everyone just started using it. I fucking hate the word normalcy. It's not real. It, the word is normality. Say normality. We want normality. We want to go back to normality, not normalcy. It's not a word. But then, of course, it just got used so many times that it got incorporated into a word. And then, I, you know, I got about a thousand of you guys that go in my comments like, oh, well, it's actually a word. It's not a fucking word. But anyway, for me, that drove me crazy because that word came in so important during COVID because everyone just started saying it. It was just like, oh, my God. And again, it's Mercury retrograde and Libra squaring Pluto is truly little tiny things, little tiny things can really make the biggest fucking difference in, in, in word, like in, in your vernacular and your vocabulary and your ideas and how you express things and how you communicate things in Mercury, in retro, Mercury retrograde, you know, squaring Pluto, you know, you're going to see this with laws. You're seeing this with a, a lot of laws right now, like that's about to go into Supreme Court. Um, I think you'll see a lot of that come up during this because, again, Pluto is going to be ruling power and that Mercury retrograde, you know, maybe I don't want to say a misinterpretation of the law because I do not need to stir any of that type of pot. But what I would really say here is that, um, you know, our words are really all that we have and um, they truly are very powerful. So choose them wisely at this time, um, which is funny advice coming from me. But um, anyway... Uh, that's Friday. We get into uh, Saturday. Saturday's a little bit better. We have the moon going opposite Jupiter. The moon's going to make that sextile to Mercury, but then square Venus. Um, it's fine, really. It, it is good. Uh, I think the moon going opposite Jupiter is kind of like, yeah, like, see, this, it feels good to be honest with people. Like, moon and Leo opposite Jupiter and Aquarius is very like, hey, I got to just keep it real. Most people will accept that. Most people are cool with it. Um, they get it. I think the moon and Leo sextiling Mercury here. I think it's much easier. I, can, I can't speak today. It is much easier to commute. For example, when the moon was in Cancer squaring Mercury, it's like you're too emotional to express the thing that you're trying to get across. Moon and Leo sex telling Mercury is like, you know, your 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 heart, your mind, you are your ego is buffed up enough to say what you need to say without getting caught in the emotional aspect of it all. The moon is going to be squaring Venus where, you know, um, you know, a good example of Venus and Scorpio is like embarrassment. And I feel like moon and Leo squaring Venus and Scorpio is like some things are embarrassing, like being honest requires being vulnerable sometimes and being vulnerable can feel embarrassing it can feel because you because you can't hide things right and a lot of us as human beings we have these insecurities we have these fears that we just uh for whatever reason we feel like we have to hide even though we really don't um but you know that moon and leo scoring venus and scorpio is very like you know do you have the courage to be honest do you have the courage to be vulnerable with your fears with the things that you don't like want people to know it, you know moon and leo scoring venus and scorpio too is like if you're going to be honest, sometimes people are going to know things that, you know, you don't want them to know. Like, oh, my God. For example, the Elizabeth Holmes thing, the Elizabeth Holmes thing, uh, the Theranos chick, the Theranos chick. Um, I always <laughs> her voice is so funny. Anyway, I just I, I watched this video for like five seconds and it was talking about like her text messages between like her the guy that was like investing in the business and how they were in a relationship. And it was so embarrassing. Like they were like they were like sex. They were like sex. And the news is just like broadcasting them. I'm like, how cringe. Like, stop airing this. I don't give a fuck about what they were saying to each other in their text messages. Of course, it matters for the court case. But like, it's just like one of those things where like, it's embarrassed. It's just like, but the moon is opposite Jupiter. It's sex telling Mercury. You got to be honest. Sometimes it's, it is uncomfortable at the very minimum, right? But hey, like, are, would you rather hide certain things? Or would you rather be like, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to be honest and truthful about it. You know, it's kind of up to you on Saturday. Um, either way, it kind of seems like an uncomfortable position to be in nonetheless, which really does bring us to brings us to uh, Sunday. The moon's going to ingress into Virgo. And then Mercury is going to be training Jupiter while they're both retrograde, which is a very interesting aspect. That's a really quick um, horoscope. I'm surprised. I thought I was going to. I thought this one was going to be really long because there's just so many little tiny weird things here. Sunday, 
We'll talk about the moon and Virgo going in there in a second. I want to talk about this. Mercury is retrograde, training Jupiter retrograde. There's like, that's like good for going backwards. That's like, you know, there are very specific situations in life where you want things to go backwards. You're like, yes, we don't want that. Come, go, come back. You know what I mean? And Mercury retrograde in Libra is kind of like going, oh, like this could work out easier. Oh, I did misinterpret this. And Jupiter retrograde in Aquarius, right? Like we're still, as Jupiter's retrograde, it's getting ready to station direct, but it's still retrograde. We're still having a lot of questions about, you know, again, Jupiter's integration and hope in the future. And Aquarius is like the greater society. We're like, where's everything going? I think as Mercury's retrograding in Libra, this is kind of like understanding where the misinterpretation is, where understanding where the miscommunication is. And it's it, this is all trying stuff, right? It's like, have you ever had an argument with someone that clearly there's a huge disagreement, but then you realize that there's a disagreement because one of the parties doesn't actually understand the problem or understand the other person. And then like, you know, once that kind of happens, there's like a, oh, like, oh, that's what's going on. You're like, yeah, duh. That's kind of what I think a lot of this is. Um, on a personal level though, I think this is being able to be like, it's what I love about this is it's Mercury and Libra, Jupiter and Aquarius. There's this level of honesty. This is real. There's this level of reality, right? You have to remember, yeah, all of this Libra stuff is ruled by Venus. Who's in, who's in detriment by the way. So she's really struggling. She has to be really real right now, but all of this is exalted by Saturn. Jupiter's in Saturn sign, Mars, sun, Mercury, all in Saturn's exaltation, there's so much Saturnian energy with all of this, like just being real, just being honest, doing and being authentic, right? It's something I talk a lot about. I think as Venus is in Scorpio, these aren't easy things. These aren't comfortable things to do. Um, we're going to feel uncomfortable because some often, you know, it's why people don't want to address elephants in the room. That's why, like, that's why people don't like, you know, it's funny. Everyone's like, I love Saturn. It's amazing how many people avoid, like, the Saturnian things in their life, like taking responsibility, um, being mature, um, you know, being patient. Like, I can, I know people who are even old who can't even do those type of things, right? Um, for, so for people to be like, oh, I love Saturn. I incorporate Saturn so much in my life. I'm like, I, it's very rare where you actually see people that are, like, truly Saturnian in their nature. Um, but a lot of this is. A lot of this is like, hey, it's not easy. Like the Saturn work is not easy. Growing up isn't easy. Being responsible and handling that responsibility is far from easy. It is challenging, right? Um, but it's the things that challenge you are the things that give you strength. The things that challenge you are the things that literally help you grow. It makes us uncomfortable. That's what classifies malefics as being malefic is it makes us uncomfortable uh, but those are the things that can make us grow. Those are the things that can help us learn lessons to make life easier and less sufferable. But on Sunday, I think as Mercury's retrograding in Libra with Jupiter here too, there's this kind of like, what is, you know, reneg I said this a lot too with my Mercury retrograde video. A lot of this is about renegotiating the terms with things, being like, hey, we're willing to do this if this, you know, we're willing to go over here if this, we're willing to negotiate things. And I think as Mercury's shining Jupiter, it's like, okay, now we can actually get somewhere. Now we can actually go somewhere. And I think as the moon goes into Virgo on Sunday, we're just getting ready for that new moon in Libra. But I think as the moon's in Virgo, there's this kind of like settling in with the facts, settling in with what is understood, settling in with like, okay, for example, you know, they're in, in a court case, or let's say if you're in a, in a lawsuit, you can sue someone. And then let's say they offer you uh, a certain amount of money to settle. This moon in Virgo is kind of like, you know what? You do the numbers, you do the math, you look in your heart, you're like, you know, maybe I should settle. Let's just settle this out. And then it's like, okay, if we're going to settle it. Let's get all of this paperwork in line. Let's, we got to, you know, it, it requires this amount of things happening. So, that's really what Sunday looks like. It's like, all right, this is what we're, you know, we're coming to a certain terms, we're, we're coming to a certain conclusion going, okay, I'm fine with that. Let's, let's do it. It's because, well, because again, well, that actually is a perfect segue into next week. Because let's talk about next week. New moon in Libra, like balancing things out. The Mars Kazemi, the fucking Mars Kazemi. Venus goes into Sagittarius and conjoins the South Node next week. 
And we have the Mercury Kazemi with Mars. And at the very end of Sunday night, next week, Saturn stations direct. Like it's really, there's a lot of this week of just kind of like coming to a very specific conclusion, coming to a very specific reality, I think is what this week is about. It's like Mercury's retrograde. Okay. We understand the different, like we understand what's changing now. We're going to, the moon's going to be in cancer for the majority of this week. So we're going to be very emotional about stuff. We're really going to be feeling it out. And then, you know, by the time that the moon goes into, there's like this freaking like gnat fly that's like flying right here. So I don't know if you've seen me do this, but like, anyway, uh, it's really, really annoying. But, um, you know, the moon was in cancer. We felt things out and it, you know, made us question what is right, what is wrong, what should we be doing? Then the moon goes into Leo and we kind of just be real about it. Be fucking real. Like, I hate to sound like a Gen Z millennial and be like, everyone's so fake. And I don't like saying everyone's fake. I think everyone's just fake with each other. Like, be honest with yourself. Be honest with other people. Um, And, you know, to, it's really corny to say, but honestly, really is the best policy. And it really just seems like a lot of this weekend is just like, you know, coming to a certain conclusion, settling in with certain ideas. And that really just projects us, launches us, I should say, into next week. Because next week, I mean, like New Moon and Libra, Mars, Kazemi, like you're signing paperwork, you're making, you're making trades, you're, you're doing business. Everything changes next week. And I hate you. I don't want to say I hate using that term, but like the energy truly shifts next week. Like this week, yeah, Mercury station's retrograde, but the thing is Mercury has been in this part of the sky forever. This is all stuff that we knew was coming. That's the thing with Mercury retrogrades. It's like, this isn't, is it surprising? Is it when Mercury stations, it's like, you know, we should have saw it coming if anything. And as Mercury stations retrograde moves backwards, it's really when Mercury goes Kazemi with, and then Mars goes Kazemi. Why as Venus enters Sagittarius goes into the South Node? It's like that's truly getting rid of a lot of stuff. That's truly changing a lot of things, moving on from a lot of things. And then Saturn stations direct. It's like shit gets serious again and we can kind of move forward from there. Um, but that's this week for you guys. I think that's all I've got really. Um, with that being said, um, I don't think there's anything else to go over. Thank you guys so much for being here. Liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Let me know what you think is going to go on this week for you guys. Um, yeah, with that being said, I'll be seeing you next week.